Welcome back everyone. Today we are going to be diving into a simulated integration bee. This was a request by one of my dear friends called Rion. Like the deal was to do 100 integrals, but I just told him, hey, my phone's got some problems and it awkwardly stops filming in the middle. So I'm sorry, man. We got to make a do with 25 today and let's get started. So the first thing is the integral of arc sine of x over 1 minus x squared. Oh, all right. It's a pretty simple one, straightforward one. Now I'm gonna tilt that just so that it makes it easier to see. And now, yeah, so I could straight away do a u substitution because I see the arc sign there and the derivative of it right there. So that is the integral of u du. And now that would just be the integral of u, which is u squared over two plus c, which is the inverse sign of x squared over 2 plus c. All right, that's all for the first one. That was a big troll, in my opinion. All right, let's move on. Now we are on to the second one, which is the integral of e raised to the secant of x uh, times sine over cosine squared. First up, I don't like fractions like that, so let's redefine that to the tangent of x times the secant of x times e raised to the secant of x dx. Now, I can do another u substitution right here. I do not have a pencil, but I can change the color of the pen. That is secant, that is u, and that is du. So now, this would just be the integral of e raised to u du, which is e raised to secant of x plus c. That's the final answer. All right, moving on. Here's another troll where the u could be the natural log of x, and now the derivative of that is just 1 over x dx, which is right there. So this is just the integral of du over u, which is the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c, which is just the natural log of the absolute value of the natural log of x plus c. Well, that's all to it. All right, here's the interesting part right now. The integral of pi raised to x. What are we supposed to do? Because this is not a straightforward integration where I can just add the power by one and then subtract and then divide it by the power. This is a power function. So all I got to do is just repeat the integral, repeat the term pi raised to x over the natural log of pi plus c. That's all to it. Try taking the derivative of that and let me know in the comments about what you get. I'm pretty sure you should be getting what I got right there. Now, number five, the cosine of the sine of x times the cosine of x. I can let u equals the sine of x. Therefore, du is just the cosine of x. So my new integral would be the integral of the cosine of u du, du cos x dx, by the way, I forgot my differential out there, so which is just the integral of sine of u plus c, which is, in other words, sine of the sine of x plus c, make sure to put your plus c on. All right, now we got some complicated functions out there, this is tangent cubed of x plus the tangent raised to the fifth power. So all I got to do right here is factor out a tangent tangent cubed. So now I am just going to factor that out. This is going to be the tangent cube of x times the tangent squared of x plus 1 dx. So for beginners, you got to learn your trig identities, which is this part inside could be something really simple. It's also called secant squared x, by the way, because that is a trigonometric identity that you could derive from the parent one, which says sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals one. So the new integral would be, all right, to derive that, you just got to divide both sides by cosine squared x. That gives you tan squared x plus one equals secant squared x. So the new integral would be the tangent cubed of x times secant squared of x dx. 
Now, I see I can let u be the tangent of x and du is secant squared x dx. So the final integral would just be the tangent raised to the fourth of x over 4 plus c. All right, that's all. And we're done with six integrals already. Now, let's move on. We got a lot to cover today, that's for sure. All right, I'm just going to keep the, the remaining integrals at a different place now. And let's move on to number seven. All right, number seven says e raised to x times the tangent of e raised to x over the secant of e raised to x. So I am going to simplify this function first. So this tangent, that could just be the integral of e raised to x times... Now I have to remember that secant is 1 over the cosine, and then cosine is in the denominator. So they both cancel out, so this is just going to be the integral of e raised to x times sine x dx. I can let u equal e raised to x, and du is e raised to x dx. So this would just be the integral of the sine of u du, which is basically the negative cosine of e raised to x plus c. Well, that's all to it. Now, number eight, this is two times the definite integral from negative one to one of the square root of one minus x squared. So first up, I am not going to trig substitution to solve this integral. All I'm going to do is I am just going to think about the equation of a circle where y equals, actually, it's r squared equals y squared plus x squared. Now, if I am to solve for y, y would be equal to the square root of r squared minus x squared. So this is a semicircle on the quadrant plane, and so the area of that would just be pi r squared over 2. And now, since I have a 2 on the outside, there's going to be another 2 which cancel out. So it's pi r squared, where r squared is just 1. So the final answer is pi. All right. Don't sweat it. Just don't sweat it. All right, the next one. Oh, God. The never-ending radical of x. Trust me, this one, don't even worry about it because this can be simplified. So I can let y equal to the radical of x of the radical of x of the square root of x of the square root of x to go on. And so this equation could be redefined as y equals x, x, y equals the square root of xy, where y equals y squared equals xy, and now x equals y if I divide that. So this one is just the integral of x dx, which is x squared over 2 plus c. Way to get trolled, everyone. I'm pretty sure you got trolled by that. I would be surprised if you weren't, but if you didn't, kudos to you. And now... Let's move on to number 10, which is a pretty scary one, or it just looks pretty scary. So I can let u equal the natural log of x and du equal one over x dx. All right, so I can change my bounds right now, which is just the natural log of e. Well, that's one, and the natural log of e raised to e would just be e. So now my new integral would read the integral of 1 to e of, of u times the natural log of u du. Now, here we go, trying to integrating this, try to integrate this by parts. Let dv equal u, and let w equal the natural log of u. So this integral would be the integral of dv, which is u squared over 2. So that's the first part of the integral, which is u squared over 2 multiplied by the natural log of u from 1 to e. So now I got to subtract that from the integral of 1 to e of v du, which is v, that is u squared over 2 times the derivative of the natural log of u, that is 1 over u du. And now, evaluating this part, this is just e squared over 2 times 1 minus 0, because that part really does not exist. And this part would just be the integral of e over 2. 
of u over 2 from 1 to e, which is just going to be u squared over 4 ranging from 1 to e, which, just don't worry about it, is just e squared over 2 minus e squared over 4 plus 1 over 4, which is just e squared over 4 plus 1 over 4. And that's about it. Now, let's move on. There, there are harder ones out there, I promise you. That's the end of our first slide. And now, here, number 11. Another natural log, no problem. This one is the integral from 0 to 1 of the natural log of 1 plus x over 1 minus x dx. All right, I apologize. You may not be able to see that, so let me just slide down. Slide down a little, please. All right, there we go. So now, we could just break this up, break this fraction up. You don't need to do any complicated steps. So we are just going to break this fraction up into a couple of simpler fractions, the ones that we can deal with. So that would be equal to the integral of 0 to 1 of the natural log of 1 plus x minus, all right, dx minus the integral of 0 to 1, the natural log of 1 minus x dx. For those of you that haven't noticed, I just use a property of logari logarithms where I could just break up a fraction into the difference between the two logarithms. And now, I really don't need to do a whole integration by parts out here, but since I know the derivative, I know the integral of the natural log of x on the top of my on the back of my head, but I'm just gonna do it anyway. So I'm gonna let u in the first part be one plus x, and let v and the second part be 1 minus x. Now du is just dx, and dv is just minus dx. So now let's change our bounds. So in the first part, the bounds are just going to say from, from 1 to 2. That is 1 to 2 of the natural log of u du minus. And now since there's going to be another negative sign, I... I'm just not going to do a whole lot about it. I'm just going to keep it inside there. And now the next bounds would be 0 and 1, but they're flipped. But I can use the negative sign inside to flip the bounds again. That is 0 to 1. All right, let me just switch the pen because this one's not good. Of the natural log of we dv. And now let's... Let's go ahead and integrate that, which would just be u times the natural log of u minus u minus we times the natural log of we minus we from 0 to 1, and this one from 1 to 2, all in the parentheses. And now this would just be the natural log of 4 minus 2, and then the second part, I don't even need to worry about the first half of that, because that would just be a zero, because the natural log of one is zero, and now I have a plus one out there. Now, I don't need to worry about the second half at all of this, but then the first the first half is just gonna be a negative one. So this would be the natural log of four minus two plus two, which is still the natural log of four. Well, that was pretty tiring. All right. I got a few more good ones to deal with now. We just started, boys. We haven't gone anywhere yet. So, first up, the arctan of x plus x squared over x squared plus 1. To find this integral, I'll need to break the fraction up first, which is the arctan of x over x squared plus 1 plus the integral of x squared over x squared plus 1. It's a dx. There are dx's. Now, I see the derivative of the arctan right there. The first part of this integral isn't all that bad. Because it's just u du, which is just going to be the arctan squared of x over 2. Now, I can add the plus c constant later on, but let's not worry about it right now. Then, to deal with the second part of the integral, dx. Now, since I just see a constant difference between the numerator and the denominator, I can just add and subtract to 1, because that helps me break this function up. And now, 
I can break that up into the integral of 1 dx minus the integral of dx over x squared plus 1 plus the arctan squared of x over 2, which would just be this last part. We just saw that at the beginning of the problem. That's the arctan of x. And this one is just x. So the final answer would be the, the tan inwards of x over 2 plus x minus the tan inwards of x plus c. Except this one's the tan inwards squared. Excuse me for dropping that. But now, that's it. Let's move on. Okay, the integral with respect to x of e raised to x with square root on the denominator. Don't worry about that at all, because that could be redefined as e raised to negative x over 2 dx. And now that would just be e raised to negative x over 2. And now, since this is just negative 2 times that, so that is just going to be that because the negative 2 is just an application of the chain rule. Now, differentiating that real quick would just give you e raised to negative x over 2, which is just the 1 over the square root of e raised to the x. Okay. Oh, no. Am I in for some trigonometric trouble right now? Of course not, because this is a bigger troll than anything I've ever seen. e raised to the sine squared of x times e raised to the cosine squared of x First up, I don't like two e's multiplying with each other, so I'm just going to add them up into 1e, e, which is a sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x dx. Now, like I mentioned earlier in the video, sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x is just 1. So the numerator is 1. So this is really the integral of e with respect to x, which is this e x plus c nothing more nothing more well let's move on all right there's there are a few baddies out here but we we we'll get through it it wouldn't take very long except the first one does seem pretty scary because it is x plus the square root of x with respect to x the first thing I'm going to do is factor out a dx, as factor out a square root of x, which is just the integral of dx over the square root of x times the square root of x plus 1. So let u be the square root of x plus 1, and du would just be the square, would just be 1 half times 1 over the square root of x. And now this part, don't even worry about it, because the 2 is just missing. This is the same thing as 2 times the integral of du over u, which is just 2 times the natural log of u, which is 2 times the natural log of the square root of x plus 1. Try differentiating that, and you should end up with something really similar. Alright, that's it for this question. Let's move on to the next. All right, another natural log troll, because I see it right away. Because the numerator has 2x plus 1, and the denominator has 2x squared plus 2x plus 1. Taking the direct derivative would just give me 4x plus 4, 4x plus 2. Then the numerator only differs by a scalar multiple. So I can multiply and divide by 2, which is 2 over 2 times. Now let u be... 2x squared plus 2x plus 1. And du is just 4x plus 2, which is just du over. And now the 2 gets swallowed inside there, so I'm just going to get rid of it, which is du over u, which is 1 half times the natural log of the absolute value of 2x squared plus 2x plus 1 plus c. All right, that's about it for this problem. And now we can come back to 17 because it looks a little out of my comfort zone right now, but let's go to 18, the dx over 1 over x. So the 1 over x could be could be redefined as dx dx, which is just x squared over 2 plus c. Trolly enough, huh? All right, number 19. 
It is the integral of pi over the square root of 16 minus e squared with respect to x. I don't see an x in there, so that just means it's x raised to 0. So this is the easiest integral, which is just pi x over the square root of 16 minus e squared plus c. And that's, that's all for this problem. I'm pretty sure you got trolled by it. And now, let's come back to 17, which is the natural log of natural log squared of x. Now, to solve this problem, we will need to apply integration by parts, of course. Kudos to you guys who guessed it. So, I'm going to let u equal the natural log squared of x. And now, dv would just be dx and we would be x. So the integration by parts formula, as that goes, would just be the integral of u, v. So that's x times the natural log squared of x minus the integral of v du, which means this is x times two times the natural log of x over x dx. If I got that right, the x's cancel out, and the final answer would be x times the natural log squared of x minus 2x natural log of x. And now that is just going to be a plus 2x plus c. Well, that's about it. This didn't seem that hard, did it? All right, we're done with the third two. Now, the last set. It's only five more to go. We made it. Looks like we made it. All right, now number 20 is x times 1 minus x raised to 2020 dx with respect to x. So I can, the first thing I can do is let u equal 1 minus x. Therefore, x would be equal to 1 minus u. So redefining this integral would be 1 minus u multiplied by u raised to 2020 dx. And now, we, we're distributing that over. We'll just give you the integral of u raised to 2020 minus the integral of u raised to 2021 du. Oops. No, that was with respect to u. I apologize for that. Now, taking the integral, it's u raised to 2021 over 2021 minus u raised to 2022 over 2022 plus c. Now, I got to substitute my u's back, which means this is 1 minus x raised to 2021 over 2021 minus 1 minus x raised to 2022 over 2022 plus c. Right, that's the final answer, and there we go. Okay, now this is a double integral of the first bound from 0 to 1 with respect to x of e raised to x over x, and second bound from 0 to x with respect to y. So first up, for those of you guys who've already paused the video, I request you to unpause it and do not try this on your own because you're never going to get to the answer, as this is not an integral that you can get by parts or by applying any brute force method. So what we're going to do is swap the order of integration by making it the integral from 0 to 1, and then from 0 to x, of e raised to x over x, dy dx. Now, since there's no y there, there is just going to be a y there, an imaginary 1. So it goes from 0 to 1 of e raised to x over x times x minus 0 dx. Now, the x's cancel out, and now the integral of e raised to x is just e raised to x. So this answer is just e minus 1. Yep, that's all. And now this is a trigonometric problem again. We have three more to go, and this one should not take us very long if we once we've seen it. So the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of sine of 2x times the arctan of sine x with respect to x. So the first thing, I'm pretty sure I can't do it when it's an x, so I got to do a u substitution immediately. Goes without saying u equals a sine of x. du is the cosine of x dx. But now I got to change my bounds as well. The lower bound of u is 0 and the upper bound of u is 1. So now 
I got to take the the new integral would be 0 out of 1 of sine of 2x is just so I'm going to write that to the side sine of 2x would be equal to 2 times the sine of x all right sine of x times the cosine of x and now I can break that up and there there we go I see my du as well so that is 2 times the sine of x all right no can't do that sine of x is u times the arc tan of u du. And now to take the integral of the u arc tan u, I got to apply by parts again. So this time we're going to use v and w as our variables. Let dv equals u. And now let w equals the arc tan of u. So v equals u squared over 2 and dw equals 1 over u squared plus 1. So now the first integral would just be v times u. That is u squared over 2 times the arctan of u. That is just 2 times u squared over 2 times the inverse tangent of u from 0 to 1 minus the integral of v du. That's u squared over 2 times 2 times 1 over u squared plus 1 du from 0 to 1 and now the 2's cancel out and now this would just be 1 times the arctan of 1 that is just pi over 4 minus now let's simplify this integral first up it's the integral of zero from 0 to 1 of du over du times u squared over u squared plus 1 we got the integral of this earlier, and that was just x minus the arctan of x. But then here, we're not allowed to do that because we have specific variable bounds. So this is just going to evaluate to pi over 4 minus. So u squared over u squared plus 1 is the same thing as 1 minus 1 over u squared plus 1. So taking the integrals from both, I get x from 0, u from 0 to 1, which is just 1. And now I got to add that to the arctan of the integral from 0 to 1. The arctan of 1 is pi over 4, and then the arc, and then the arctan of 0 is just 0. So that is just going to be pi over 4, which is just pi over 2 minus 1. All right, that's number 22 for you. Now, we have a pretty simple one to finish things off, and then we have our final problem. So, this is the integral of 2 times the natural log of x over x. I see something immediately. Let u equals the natural log of x, and du is just dx over x, and this one is just 2 times the integral of u du, which is just 2 times u squared over 2. That's just u squared. So this integral is just natural log of x squared plus c. Right, there we go. All right, here's our final integral of the day. The natural log of 1 plus 2x over x squared plus 1 dx from 0 to 2. Well, for starters, don't try integration by parts for all that's divine because you are just going to be caught up in a never-ending web. And you really do not want that. So there are a couple of ways this integral could be solved. I've heard that a variation of this integral appeared on the Putnam exam one rare time in 2005. But there are two ways this can be solved. You could use a x fraction method or a trigonometric substitution, where I, in this video, am going to use a trigonometric substitution. There is a link in the description for a similar problem like this that I've solved a while ago. Feel free to check that out. But let's get started for now. So the first thing I can do I, is I can let x be the arctan of u. Or I can, in other words, let u be the tangent of x. And du is just the secant squared x dx. Now my bounds would be the arctan u on the lower limit would just be 0 because the tangent is 0, 0. And then u in the upper bound would just be the arctan of 2. 
I'm sorry if I misspoke earlier. What I meant to say was the arc tan of zero would still be zero in case I said the tangent. I'm not sure, but let's move on. Now this integral, so I gotta redefine the integral as zero to the arc tan of two, the natural log of one plus two tangent of u over, all right, for starters, what is x squared? Okay, wait a minute. Yeah, that's that's good, that's good. So x squared plus one. That would just be, that would just be secant squared, right? Because tan squared of x plus one is secant squared. And now this would just be secant squared, square to u. All right. Actually, I pardon the interruption. The substitution we should have made was x equals the tangent of u. And now that's how this is going to work. So excuse the previous substitution. x equals the tangent of u. And dx would be equal to secant squared of u du. And now when, when I substitute that into my... Now this is where the substitutions would make sense. Because the arc tan of 0 would be 0. And the arc tan of 2 would make the upper limit of a a u as the arc tan of 2. So that's where it was the same substitution anyway. So now the dx would just be secant squared u du, and they both cancel out. So we have a much more manageable integral right now. The tan squared of 2 of the natural log of 1 plus 2 times the tangent of u du. Now we are going to apply a theorem called King's Theorem, which is a pretty useful theorem in calculus. Not many of you might know of it, but here's what it says. The definite integral of a function from a to b with respect to x, or with respect to any variable really, would be the same thing as the definite integral to function from a to b of the sum of the limits minus x dx. So applying that here, we are going to get another integral, which looks like zero to the integral from 0 to arc tan of u times the, of the natural log of 1 plus 2 times the tangent of the arc tan of 2 plus 0, which really doesn't matter, minus 2 du. And now, instead of doing all of that, we got to apply the tangent of a minus b formula, which is just the tangent of a minus the tangent of b over 1 plus the tangent of a times the tangent of b. Now, let's evaluate this again. Now, simplifying that, this integral would give me the integral from 0 to 1 of the arc tan of 2. Whoops, not the arc tan of 2, but 0 to the arc tan of 2. All right. Please excuse my occasional slip up. This is 1 plus 2 times... 2 minus u, 2 minus the tangent of u, I got that, over 1 plus 2 times the tangent of u. Everything with respect to u, by the way, so this is a du. Now, distributing that and simplifying this would give me zero, the integral from 0 to the arc tan of 2, not 1, of the natural log of 1 plus 4 over... 1 plus 2 times the tangent of u. Uh, I skipped a step that could be easily verified because 2 times 2 is 4 and 2 times the negative tangent of u is just negative 2 tangent of u. But then that, when added with the, with the positive 2 times the tangent of u, just cancels out. So this integral is just going to be the same thing as the integral from 0 to the arc tangent of 2 of the natural log of 5 over 1 plus 2 times the tangent of u. Like I showed you early in the video, you could break this up into two integrals, which would be 0 to the arc tangent of 2 of the natural log of 5 minus the integral from 0 to the arc tan of 2 of the natural log of 1 plus 2 times the tangent of u, du. And now, the second part of this integral is the same as the integral right here up in the second step. So the least we could do is we could just use symmetry and now we could just call this integral to be 
1 half times the integral from 0 to the nat arc tan of 5, arc tan of 2, the natural log of 5 with respect to u. Now, since there's nothing, I could just treat that as a constant. And my final answer would be 1 half times the natural log of 5 times the arc tan of 2. The tan inverse of 2. And we are done for now. Thank you for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed every bit of this video as much as I did, and I hope you learned something new today. Please do subscribe, and you can always feel free. Just feel free to let me know in the comments if you thought something was off, something could be better, or like you liked something. So please do let me know all of your views. Thanks for watching. Until next time.